As I've said before, every story has a beginning. But the beginning of this story was almost the end. A few weeks prior, Dan had joined us on our French Broad expedition. But things didn't go as he had hoped. A bad day on the river left him wondering if this was what he really wanted to do. And the look on his face that day said not in a million years. Help me see how do I come back? When he went home early from our kayak camping expedition, he was gutted. He'd only made it 15 miles. He hadn't even made it to the good stuff yet. I remember he even mentioned selling some of his boats while we were still on the river that day. To say he wasn't enjoying himself would be an understatement. But that's the thing about the river. It never lies to you. He thought he was ready but the river sent him home with his head down and his dreams crushed. I simply recommended not making any quick decisions. Just go home, regroup, let it soak in. My hope is that the call of Whitewater would draw him back in. What Dan had figured out is how big water feels, how grasping for air and trying to claw your way to dry ground feels, how quitting feels, he knew how that long, lonely drive home feels, and he knew how it felt to have your worst kayaking day plastered on YouTube. He knew how it felt to watch your friends float off into the sunset while you headed home. But what he wanted to feel is the smiles, the laughter, the camaraderie of finishing something big with your friends, that feeling of exhilaration for cleaning a big rapid, he wanted to see those beautiful places tucked away in the middle of a tough run that can't be seen any other way. He just wanted to do well. He wanted to come back. Come to me. How do I come back? It was week of rivers in 2024 an event hosted by the Carolina Canoe Club that brings thousands of whitewater boaters from all over the country and beyond. Headquartered in Bryson City, the home river is essentially the Nantahala. And each year I get a cabin on the river and hang out for the week. For seven or eight days, we literally eat, sleep, and breathe whitewater kayaking. I can think of no better place, no better setting, and no better group to surround yourself with if you're looking for a comeback in Whitewater. Almost the entire Whitewater community is here, and there's something for everyone to paddle here from flat water to class five and everything in between. You can push it as far as you want, but the first step is showing up. We were all excited to hear that Dan was on his way. We were ready. He was ready. And we couldn't wait to show him the wonderful world of white water. You're looking good, bro. Thanks. I lost a few pounds. I don't know. Yeah, he's got a heck of a paddle, doesn't he? Put your hand up. So in a white water, you're supposed to gently reach up and be able to reach over the That's top. So you're like, you're like four inches too long. That's a 230, what do I need? 200. 200. What if we got an extra just white water paddle from bar? I'm a yellow one. Let's do that. You we'll get you a, a white water paddle. Yeah, you're yeah it's good. Yeah, get it under the lip? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so important things to start, we'll talk about is gonna be edging. Okay. Like we talked about before, river's fast, 
but once you're at the speed of the river, it doesn't matter. It's just when you're stopped and the water is not. And so like when you peel out or anything, just go ahead and give it that edge and then smile. <laughs> Dan had not been at the house more than 15 minutes and we were on the water. Paddling from the cabin down through the falls and the play hole. This was going to be his first test. Also joining us today was Brandon and his wife Liz. We had met at Canoe Copia. They had made the drive all the way from Wisconsin, and this is their bucket list river. We're going to make that happen too. Keep leaning right. Like a champ! So far, so good. It's going to be a bunch of mostly like this all the way down to the good stuff. So you got plenty of time to warm up. And then when you get to the good stuff, it's, it's going to be over before you know it. So just stay in the wave trains, stay off pillar rocks. You know what that is? So if you see a round mound, that's not good. You want the sharp peaks, that, those are the haystacks, wave trains. The round mounds are, are pillows of water on top of rocks that you can dry out on. Or, um, I told the other guys, some of these guys, especially this one right here, is gonna be going for all the hero and the fun lines, extra fun. You might not wanna follow him. So I'll be focusing on you three. Everyone else pretty much knows the river. So yeah, if I'm going and I'm in front of you, just follow me exactly. I will tell you if I'm gonna do something crazy. So just assume I'm on the best line, even if it doesn't look like it at the beginning. Sometimes best line is the most water. Yeah. So this middle right here, the first thing is a pour over hole. It's not great. So just stay the left of that middle section, that little horizon line. We're going to stay a little left. Yeah, KK. Head right, Liz. Follow those big wave trains. And then come back left after you get about 20 feet from the bank. Very nice. To the right of the big rock. Right through there. Yeah, Dan! Woo! Yeah! The first rapid that means anything is called bump. And it's got some squirrelies that kind of go down through there. And it's got a big pour over hole. And the hero line is to boof over it. If you don't want to do that, you can go to the right of it, sneak it. We have arrived! Next stop, bump. If you don't want the big juice, stick to the right of it. They feel like they're getting bigger. Just relax, it's fine. And then we're going right through the race line. Whatever happens, whatever happens, just smile. It's fine. Yeah, this falls. There's a guy with the camera down there, too. So smile. Smiling, that's all that matters. The wave trains are like a scooch bigger than what you just went through. Don't let it get you in, like nervous. It's just waves. So if you're falling right behind me, you'll be fine. And then we're shooting the race line. Just, just go right through.
the bag handle and smile. You good? Good. You did great. Hey, you ran the meat of it. All right, you good? Awesome, KK. Way to do it, girl! <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, Clara! Yeah! You're up, you're up, you're up! Alright. There's a little left. The play hole. Yes! Both holes, just keep it straight, keep a little speed. Don't lean back and put your paddle up. Just paddle through both of them. Y'all ready? Yes, sir! Oh! Yeah! You got it! Catching Eddie! Yeah, Dan! Dan, paddle to the left and catch an eddy. Yeah, Liz! Swim, oh, swim. swim, swim right, swim right. Swim, you got it, keep swimming. Keep swimming, you got it, you got it. Yeah! Awesomeness. Or you could probably stand up. Walk up to your boat, we'll get you back in it, get you across. Good stuff, Liz! Dan crushed it! That's what I'm talking about. He even sent the big hole at the bottom. Tell me how you feel. I feel really good. Really good. Better boat, better application. Little how do you like little. white water? <clears throat> this is this was fun. This was fun. This was fun. It all's fun. <laughs> well, we just fun's relative. stair step it. <laughs> yeah. When this starts being like, I think I could do a little more, you go to the next level. You kind of work your way up, so yeah. This was maybe a little bit better introduction in the French Broad. Maybe a little. I don't think so. You know I, <laughs> I think you're just in the wrong boat. Well, I tell you what. Your mentality is right well, now. And you, you called it, you know. Already having that big swim in the French Broad, I yeah. didn't even really worry about it that much. Yeah. So once you get that first one out of the way, it's... Yep. And speaking about swims, KK! Tell me how you feel. Tell me. Oh. I'm going to sit down beside her. She had a swim there at the falls. Um, she was coughing up a little water. She grabbed my boat, got her to the bank. Tell me how you feel. Cold. Cold? Uh, were you scared at all? How scared on a level of one to 10? Uh, five. Five, that's not bad. Five is manageable. Oh, she did awesome. It's actually kind of more fun to swim sometimes in something like that, you know? You get to feel what it's really like down there. Now it is cold. And are you scared of it? Nope. KK, she's crushing. Are you going to do Bad Idea Theater? That was the one I did. That's where we're getting pool toys and just jumping the falls without a, an actual watercraft, but like a, a floaty duck or something and just basically swim through the whole falls. That sounds pretty fun. Yeah, let's do it. I'm here with the Wisconsin folks. <laughs> Tell me, how was it? It was fun. It was fun? <laughs> Scared on a scale of 1 to 10 through the falls? Uh, probably like a 7. <laughs> Talk to me about what happened there at the top hole at the play hole. I didn't see it, I just saw well, I saw uh, some uh, some green boat hole there. <laughs> uh, you know, I, just, I unintentionally tried to boop the rock. And it you boofed the rock? It didn't work. Is there a video of this?
Who'd you follow into the booth? Alan, this guy? No, were you following me? Yeah. Alan, it's your fault. You took her to the booth. I <laughs> Is Alan to blame? Investigative reports continue. Not everybody is a good role model through some of these rapids. <laughs> well, hey, y'all crushed it. Y'all made the one that matters. The play hole is just extra anyways. If you're from Wisconsin, come down to Weka Rivers. You can boat with famous people like Brandon. Liz. <laughs> Sure. Dan has known Jess and Haley for some time, but only online, and he had no idea who was trying to help him with his boat. Yep, from uh, yeah, we are from Pete's house. Yeah, we we are. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Good see you. What's your name? Jess. Jess. Oh, hey, Jess. <laughs> I don't think we actually met in person, have we? We haven't. Wow, that's no. awesome. Good. Yeah, perfect. Woo, how you doing? Doing good. Good. Hanging out off the river. Oh yeah. Yeah, they did no Koei today. I just I just yeah. ran the shuttle for them. <laughs> right, With several successful house laps under his belt, Dan was feeling pretty confident and improving quickly. And it was time to see some new river. So we loaded up the trucks and headed to the Tuckasegee Gorge. The Tuckasegee is actually easier than the Nanahala but it'll give him a chance to practice some things. All right, folks, we are here at Dillsboro Drop. Tuck CG, TFD, Dan to it, Southern Paddler. Go to the drop. We got the standard crew, plussed up with KK again. So now we're ready. Yes, 
Just a little forward momentum that direction. Watch out, Chase, watch out! Lean hard left. Oh. You're fine. You're good. I lost the battle. You're fine. It's, it's right there. Hey, don't don't try to walk. Put your feet up and float. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. You're good. You know the deal. Yeah. Just hold your boat in the paddle. Stay on your back. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. No, you yeah, that was in the wrong time. Oh, okay. You you just fell over like when you were still in the current. <laughs> awesome though. <laughs> a little too, too, it's all, hey, look, too much too early. It's all part of the fun though. Nice! You even had your elbows up a little bit. Oh, this is a good one. I forgot about this rapid. Just a little constricted flow. Just go send it. Right, go right now. Go right hard. Yep, keep going. Straighten out, you're good. Yeah, Dan! Slow down, yeah! Look at that, Eddie! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Catch the next Eddie, too. Jump right in there. Oh, battle slap! You're doing it now. All right, we got Big Bad Dan on the river today. Section nine, look, I can see it in his eyes. He can't hide it, that's game face. That's, he's like, I want to get a rapid underneath Let's myself. Do it. See what this feels like. You excited? I am. Yep. Perfect day, it's a little warm, but there's a nice breeze. The water's gonna be perfect. Test, test. Go ahead. And uh, we're gonna get him down section nine to that hamburger at Hot Springs. Heck yeah. See the views, feel the power, mm -hmm. ride the lightning. Ride the lightning. I'm excited, man. Let's do it. Redemption day. In previous conversations with Dan, the prospect of going back to the French Broad were not on the table. So this one's called Beginning. But we found ourselves talking about possible rivers for the next day. And I mentioned French Broad was running and Dan was in. He was still a little nervous and unsure. And the unknown is always the boogie monster that wants to hold us back. But he was feeling the moment and he was feeling the fire to come back. And we jumped on it. Dan can keep the right mindset from the beginning to the end, he's going to do well. But if he loses that focus, it might be another long day. In the end, it's all up to Dan. But he's surrounded with a group of friends that want to see him do well. And he's coming at it with the right frame of mind. Look at him catching that Eddie. 
right down this left channel, and then we come out to the middle right. All right, slightly right. And just float. Left stroke. Left stroke. Good. You're dead in the middle of it now, brother. <laughs> this is a great river for Dan today. I mean, it's like perfect. The next one is pillowcase or S-turn. And uh, the, the adventurous crew would probably want to run S-turn on the left. I'm going to take Dan through pillowcase as a slot through the boulders on the right. Boat this way. <laughs> yeah! Beautiful! Nice boob! The further we got into the run, the bigger the smile on Dan's face. This is exactly what he thought Whitewater should be. But it wasn't lost on him where we were. Big Pillow was the first of the bigger rapids on the run. And he wanted to get this one right. It's a big right turn. You kind of want to stay on the right side of the inside of the turn the whole time. See where Steve's going? Let's just ferry out nice and easy. Just right behind me. Just come with me. Well, just do right where he did. That worked out. Just keep it straight and paddle when you hit the bottom. Dan. Come on, Dan. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Just don't hit that log. We'll drift out into the left here. Thanks, Justin. Unbeknownst to Dan, there's another aspect to Whitewater that he'll soon discover. Everyone knows everyone, and nobody's a stranger. Here we were in the middle of nowhere, and there were eight friends sitting on a rock enjoying the day and Dan was part of it. Once again, this is exactly what he was looking for. I've experienced the outdoors in a lot of ways. 
but there's just simply nothing like the camaraderie of the Whitewater community. And rest assured, if you ever need help or rescue, it doesn't matter who you are, they're coming at a moment's notice. Chase, just be loose. Whirlpools and stuff. There's whirlpools and stuff. Yep. With Sandy Bottom behind us, we were coming up to ledges the longest, most technical rapid on the stretch. The prospect of a long swim always looms here. This is another one he wanted to get right. This is all ledges for the next 300 yards. swam all of that that you just paddled through just missed that rock to the left of it that exposed rock yes That was nice, that was a clean line. See the rebar stops? They look like sticks. I'm not sure. It's a good question. Maybe a way to divert water or something. Sorry. Yep. Very good, Dan. Perfect. Stay left of the big pillow.
Yeah, you got it. Keep going. Nice. Just find your flow, Dan. Anywhere's good. Excellent. That was awesome. Crushed it. Yeah. We were leaving Stackhouse behind and were about to enter the Windy Flats. For some reason, most kayakers don't head down this way. The Windy Flats really aren't that bad and the views are amazing. In my opinion, it's the most beautiful stretch on the whole section. This was a stretch that Dan really wanted to see it embodied his decision to keep pressing forward. And in true Cinder's fashion, he made up his mind to run Kayaker's Ledge and Frank Bell's. He was all in. And the technical little rapid just around the bend would bring a magical moment. drifted through the flats and took on the view. Sometimes it's good to look back to see where you came from and sometimes that can give you the strength to keep pressing ahead. And just ahead was Needle Island and time for Dan to face the music. Travel 
Yeah, Dan! Woo! Nailing it! Kayaker's Ledge in the rearview mirror. For a kayaker on a first ascent of a river, it's easy to become overwhelmed by considering the whole river at once. But really, you're only paddling one rapid at a time, so that should be your focus. Dan had done well and he kept his focus all day, but it's impossible to totally compartmentalize that feeling of being almost done. He had just run the biggest rapid of his life and now he was about to do that again by several times of magnitude. He's almost through and he has one big monster to slay. Trevor coming down the booth line. Trevor and Kyle. think you might be able to make that booth pretty good but uh i think let's just keep it set up for success and put you in here i like yeah I agree. yeah you're gonna you're gonna skirt the left side of that hole yeah and then aim for the flume over there got it whatever happens once you push out you're going through yeah if you swim just feed up and enjoy the ride okay and uh yeah but i think you'll be fine inbound Steve, Chase, and me, main line. Now, here's the plan. Before you try to make this ferry, you don't. You can start from here, or you can start from where they are. But we're coming back to this flow either way. Yes, sir. And what we're going to do is, there's see those two rocks. Yes, sir. To the left of those two rocks is a big hole. Ooh. We're going to try to miss it to the left. Yes, sir. See the two rocks? Be ten feet to the left of those two rocks. Yes, sir. Angling to the right as you come around. Cause you gotta go back to the right through the tongue. Sir. It'll make total sense to you. Let's wait on Dan. You can do it from here, or you can try to ferry over either what, whatever you wanna do. 
If you miss your ferry, you're going. It's what your dad did the first time. <laughs> uh, you might want to just stay here and relax. Yeah, that's right. Look where you are. That line was really easy. I'm, I'm certain Dan could make it, but I, I think he's more comfortable just starting here, so we'll leave it at that. Follow you first. You take off first, he'll follow you. Make sure they know the line. It's to the right and then come back left. You got it. Yep, angle right. You got it, you got it, paddle, yeah! Yeah! Woo! Oh! Oh! oh. Now that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Doggone it, if Dan almost had a dry hair day. Dan was so close to a clean run from top to bottom. But that's how it is a lot of times, and even with good boaters. When you let your hair down and relax, the river's there waiting. We pushed off to Hot Springs, and there was only one obstacle left between Dan and his hamburger. That was Surprise Ledge. You could see the pride on his face. The swim didn't matter, and it shouldn't. He had just run section nine, and he was almost home. And while Surprise Ledge is not a hard rapid to run, the significance is monumental. For Dan, and for so many of us, it's not just completing an eight mile stretch of river, it's so much more. That's a feeling you can only get one way. And I guess sometimes, not in a million years, can come sooner than you think. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> I did it! <laughs> <laughs>